Hello. In this episode, I'm going to be explaining my interpretation of several symbols which I think are representing different types of oscillators. If you recall, in episode 3, I explained why I think the car symbol means current or current flow, and I concluded that the ancient Egyptians regarded current as the vital essence of life. Now let's look at the Ankh symbol. The word Ankh means breath of life. I think the Ankh symbol represents a loop oscillator. Loop oscillators generate a repeated oscillating electrical signal. Imagine it like a swing. Just as the swing goes back and forth, an oscillator creates an electric current that continuously alternates in direction. So where Ankh means breath of life. A breath is also something which continuously alternates in direction, and they regarded current as being the vital essence of life. So I think breath of life should be interpreted as oscillating or alternating current. You could perceive the Ankh symbol as a loop sitting on top of a capital T. Loop oscillators are considered the most versatile type of oscillators for communication systems. Here are some reasons why. Loop oscillators can generate a wide range of frequencies from a single reference frequency. This is essential in communication systems where multiple channels or frequencies are needed. They offer excellent frequency stability, which is crucial for maintaining signal integrity in communication systems. They can reduce phase noise and jitter, improving the quality of transmitted and received signals. This is especially important in high frequency applications. They can lock on to an external reference signal, ensuring synchronization with other systems. This is vital for digital communication, where timing and phase alignment are critical. They can adjust to changes in the input signal, providing reliable performance under different conditions. So I think the loop part of the symbol is representing the loop oscillator. That leaves us with the T-shape. When an electric current propagates through a conductor, it creates an electric field along the plane of the conductor. As the current flows, it also creates a magnetic field that's perpendicular to the electric field. This interplay between electric and magnetic fields is the basis for many technologies and scientific principles that we rely on daily. These perpendicular fields can be visualized as a capital T. In mathematics, the perpendicular symbol is an upside-down T, but a T orientated either way would be equally as effective at communicating perpendicularity. Our mathematicians probably opted for the upside-down one to avoid confusion with the letter T. So to summarize, Ankh means breath of life, and I think that should be interpreted as alternating or oscillating current, and I believe the actual symbol is a representation of a loop oscillator on top of a visualization of the one of the fundamental principles of electromagnetism. Now I'd like to look at the Tyet symbol. If we look at the Wikipedia entry for the Tyet symbol, you can see it's regarded as being a variation of the Ankh symbol. Contemporary translators have assigned very different meanings to the Ankh and Tyet. This is not in keeping with the rules of pictographic language. A pictogram is a graphical symbol that conveys meaning through its visual resemblance to a physical object. So if you have two symbols that are variations of the same thing, then the translation should also be variations of the same thing. I suspect the Tyet symbol is meant to represent an oscillating transformer, which as the name suggests, is another type of oscillator. Here's an oscillating transformer alongside a Tyet symbol. As you can see, there's a strong resemblance. When you interpret the Ankh and Tyet in these ways, it means that two similar pictograms have been assigned two similar meanings. The next one I want to look at is this 
It comprises the ankh, the car symbol, and a red disc. I think the red disc is supposed to represent a crystal. So overall, I'm reading this as an oscillator, some electrodes, and a crystal. Together, they give us a crystal oscillator. Here's what one of those looks like today. The final pair of oscillators I want to look at are these two. If you follow the sun's arms, you'll see that the two tallest people have axe in front of their faces. They're being held by the sun. I think these should be interpreted as solar-powered oscillators, good for obvious reasons. So in this video, we've covered the general oscillator, an oscillating transformer, a crystal oscillator, and a solar-powered oscillator. In future videos, I'll be interpreting the scenes these oscillators were taken from. This brings us to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed listening to these ideas, consider liking and subscribing. Thank you, and goodbye.